Welcome back to another thrilling tutorial. Today, we'll delve into the fascinating topic of altering the color of a material in a cinematic for Unreal Engine 5. Join me as we explore this captivating technique and unlock a world of creative possibilities. First, Let's start by creating a material parameter collection. To do this, right-click in the content browser and choose materials. From there, select material parameter collection. I'll name mine MPC color change. To begin, access the desired material parameter collection. Within it, locate the scalar parameter option and add it by selecting the plus icon situated next to the trash can icon on the right-hand side of the scalar parameter. Next, find the drop-down menu positioned on the left side of the index. From there, proceed to change the parameter name to time. Don't forget to save your changes and close the window. Next, we will create a material by right-clicking in the content browser and selecting material. I will then rename mine to mBase. To begin, open the material and perform a right-click to create a bounding box based 01 UVW Proceed by right-clicking again to create a texture sample. Next, right-click on the texture sample and convert it into a parameter, which I will rename as Noise. In the Details tab on the left, under Material Expression Texture Base, I will add a texture. I will search for Noise and select Perlin Noise. If you have your own noise texture, feel free to use it. Otherwise, you can utilize the provided one from Unreal in the starter content. To add the starter content, simply right-click in the content browser and choose Add Feature or Content Pack. Then, click on Content and with the starter content option selected, click on Add to Project. Let's return to the Material Editor. Start by dragging the R pin from the bounding box node and search for the Add function. Then, Drag the R pin from the Noise node and search for the Multiply function. Set the B value on the Multiply node to 0.4. Finally, connect the Multiply node to the B pin of the Add node. Next, drag off the Add node and locate Component Mask from the drop-down of the Mask node. Uncheck the R and make sure only the G is checked. Then, drag off the Mask node and search for Subtract. Proceed by dragging the B-pin and find the scalar parameter. Rename it as Core Offset. Next, drag off the Subtract node and locate the Add node. Then, grab our previously created Material Parameter collection from the start of the video and drop it into the Material Editor and connect that to the B-pin of the Add node. Then, drag off the Add node and search for Cheap Contrast. After that, drag off the Contrast pin and search for Scalar Parameter. I will rename this to Core Thickness and change the default value to 10. Drag the Result pin from the Cheap Contrast node and search for the Linear Interpolate function. Connect the output of the Cheap Contrast node to the Alpha pin. Begin by right-clicking and searching for a constant 3 vector. Convert this into a parameter and rename it as Color1. Proceed to create another constant 3 vector and name it Color2. Now, let's establish the connections. Link the RGB pin of Color1 to the A pin of the LERP node and connect the RGB pin of Color2 to the B pin of the LERP node. Finally, establish the last connection by linking the LERP node to the base color pin of the material. Right-click and search for the 3 Color Blend node. Next, drag the A pin away and search for the Constant node. Connect the pin from the Constant node to the C pin of the 3 Color Blend node. Now, create another Constant node and link it to the B pin of the 3 Color Blend node. Finally, update the value of the second Constant to 1.0. Drag the Result pin and search for the Multiply node Right-click and look for the constant 3 vector. Right-click again and convert it to a parameter, renaming it Core. Connect 
the RGB pin to the B pin of the multiply node. Next, grab the result pin from the cheap contrast node and connect it to the alpha node of the three color blend. Finally, link the multiply node to the emissive color pin of the material. If you attempt to save the material now, an error will occur. We need to navigate to the material parameter collection that we previously added and modify the parameter name to time. We can now save and close the material effortlessly. To create an instance of a material, simply right click and choose material instance. I've renamed it to color change. Now open the material instance. Here, you can effortlessly adjust the colors by checking the corresponding box, clicking on the black bar, and selecting your preferred hue. Keep in mind that the core color represents the emissive color, so opting for a vibrant shade might be ideal. As we rotate around, you will immediately notice the impact of these changes. By adjusting the core offset and core thickness settings, you have the ability to regulate the emissive effect. The core thickness determines the extent of the emissive display, while the core offset governs the smooth transition between different colors. When you're done, save and close the material. Now, let's create a sequencer to animate the material for a cinematic. To start, we'll add a camera to the scene for the sequencer to focus on. Here's a quick camera tip. You can adjust the focus of your camera lens by clicking on the focus setting in the detail panel. Check the Draw Debug Focus Plane option and drag the manual focus distance until the purple plane cuts your object in half. Don't forget to uncheck the box to turn off the purple plane. Right-click in the Content Browser and select Cinematic, then choose Level Sequence. I suggest renaming it to Color Change. Once the sequence is open, click on Plus Track and select Actor to Sequencer, followed by choosing the camera. Next, click on Plus Track again, but this time add the Material Parameter Collection track. On the right side of the Added Parameter Collection, Click on Plus Parameter and select Time. By default, it already adds a keyframe. Now, navigate to the last frame and add another keyframe. Change the value to 1. Ensure that your material is assigned to your object if you don't see anything in the viewport. Unreal can be a bit peculiar when it comes to the offset, so try adjusting it to achieve a smooth transition. Personally, I found that changing the start keyframe to negative 1 resulted in a more fluid flow of the transition. That concludes our tutorial on creating a dynamic color changing material in Unreal Engine. By now, you should feel confident in navigating the engine, crafting materials, and utilizing sequencers for seamless color transitions. Remember that learning is an ongoing journey, so continue to experiment with different settings and parameters to achieve your desired effects. With a blend of creativity and technical prowess, the possibilities are boundless. Thank you for joining me, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Stay tuned for future Unreal Engine tutorials. Happy creating!